Chris Kubinski was a man on a mission. He loved... ...90s hip-hop. He hated what hip-hop had become. Chris, his brother Jay, and their four cats knew things had to change. One day, Chris got an idea. A really, really crazy idea. We're going to see Trump. Jay, mid-scratch behind their cat mittens ears, looked up. Trump, why? Just trust me. They found Trump lounging in a gold-plated bathrobe at Trump Tower. Mr. Trump, we have a proposition. The cats, perched on Chris's shoulders, meowed in agreement. Trump, a sucker for cats and crazy schemes, was intrigued. We want to bring back 90s hip-hop, and we need your help. Let's do this. They shook on it. The cats purred their approval. A new era for hip-hop was about to begin. The first order of business? Resurrecting Tupac. No 90s hip-hop comeback would be complete without him. Trump knew just the guy, a scientist who owed him a favor. Let's call him Dr. Frankenstein. They tracked down Dr. Frankenstein to his secret lab, hidden beneath a Times Square pizza joint. He agreed to help, mostly because Trump threatened to tweet mean things about his pizza. With a zap of electricity and a sprinkle of Dr. Frankenstein's secret ingredient, extra cheese naturally, Tupac was back. Yo. I'm ready to make music again. But first, they had to get rid of the current state of hip-hop. No problem. Trump snapped his fingers. With a few phone calls and some legal loopholes, all modern hip-hop records mysteriously vanished. Poof! The disappearance of modern hip-hop sent shockwaves through the music industry. Rappers were freaking out. Nobody knew what happened. Well, almost nobody. Chris and his crew decided to make an example of someone, someone who represented everything wrong with modern hip-hop. They chose DaBaby. One minute, DaBaby was relaxing in his mansion, surrounded by auto-tuned yes-men. The next, Chris, Jay, Tupac and the cats, riding in on Trump's private jet, no less, burst in. DaBaby was terrified, especially of Mittens, who was giving him the stink eye. We've come to make you an offer you can't refuse. He explained their plan to bring back real hip-hop. DaBaby, shaking in his designer sneakers, confessed on national television. My music, it sucks. The nation gasped. With modern hip-hop vanquished, Chris and his crew got to work. Radio stations started blasting Biggie, Tupac, and all the classics. Kids traded their skinny jeans for baggy ones. Breakdancing battles erupted on street corners. It was like the 90s never left. I even started wearing a bandana and rapping about real life issues. I released a new single, I Miss the 90s. It became a surprise hit. DaBaby, stripped of his auto-tune and forced to listen to 90s hip-hop on repeat, had a change of heart. He even started wearing a bandana and rapping about real life issues. His new single, I Miss the 90s, became a surprise hit. Word of hip-hop's revival reached all the way to heaven. Biggie and Tupac, reunited in paradise, were throwing a celestial block party. They actually did it. Biggie said, shaking his head in disbelief. Tupac smiled. Real hip-hop never dies. He said, sipping on a heavenly glass of iced tea. Down on Earth, Chris, Jay and the Cats basked in their success. They'd saved hip-hop. Trump, true to his word, built them a giant scratching post shaped like the Empire State Building as a thank you. The world was a better place thanks to Chris J and their four furry friends. Hip-hop was back to its former glory. The music was real, the lyrics were meaningful, and the fashion was, well, let's just say it was unique. I became a vocal advocate for 90s hip-hop, even starting my own line of bandanas. I learned a valuable lesson that day. Real hip-hop never fades. And neither do cats, especially cats who love 90s hip-hop, the end.